go. Hi. We're Hi. We're watching hockey stuff. Well, I'm getting highlights. But... We're all highlighting. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Everything's going there. Everything's fine. We're running. We are stuff. running. We are running. Not really. Not we don't, running. Not good runners. I'm okay yeah. for about, you know, a kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, defensive zombies are chasing well, me. <laughs> I'm not a fast runner. I'm a distance runner. Uh, welcome to the post credit show. Yes. For Barrel Roll News, where we talk about games that we've done, play, movies. movies we've been watching, TV shows, things like that. Yes. Uh, my name's Tony. I'm Chris. And did I say the date? It's November 11th. It is. November 11th, 2017. Thanks for joining us today here in this, in this shorter cast. A small cast. Small cast. We're missing people. We're missing a few heads. Yep. So, uh, either way, let's just get... Jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. Should we talk about the thing we both watched? Let's talk about the thing we both watched. Okay, uh, I'm sure we've got a thing here. We can do that, right? Uh, no. Yes. Spoiler? Spoiler. Spoilers. We yes. are going to talk probably at Thor. length about Thor Ragnarok. That yes. was the movie that came out last week. Uh, obviously, none of us had seen it yet. No. Until just, Saturday. <laughs> just Saturday. right after? Yeah, right, literally right after we, uh, we all watched it. Um, how did you like it? Uh, <laughs> I admit... I have, I have my thoughts about it. Going into this movie, I was a little concerned that they were going to turn Thor into much of a comedy. Mm -hmm. At first, I had my feeling was true, like they did. But I felt that as the movie went on, it kind of got away from it, which was a good thing. Uh, where it went kind of more into the action, it kind of turned a little more serious. You're right. Uh, he did. I found Thor as a character was a little more silly this time. Right. Especially with that haircut scene. I think with and that's that kind of reflects what I thought about this movie. Um, Thor, when I read him in the comics, when I see him in in stuff, I just I don't see him as a comedic character. He's no. he's supposed to be a very regal character. He's supposed to be a very, uh, you know, a nobilitous character, like, individual. It was, it, and yes, this movie is a bit of him coming of, not coming of age so much, but as... Stretching his, or flexing his comedic muscles. Well, not even just comedic muscles, just flexing him as a character, showing a different side of him. And I get that this is what Taiko, Taiki Waki, Taiko Waki wanted can, to do. Yeah. What he wanted to do with the character. And yeah, like, it, it's very much a comedy movie. Yeah. There's obviously... At the start. I found that very at the start, anyways. Mm. And I think it, even... There, yeah, were jokes, right. there were jokes. There were jokes throughout. You're right. You're right. But it, it did... As it got as the movie became, oh, well, we, have, like, we really have to do this, the yeah. jokes kind of went away. To to address it, yes, this is this is the best Thor movie. Yeah, which I mean... Of all of them so far. That's not saying... Uh, yeah, the other ones... The other ones, our bars are really low. <laughs> Dark World was okay. It yeah. was passable. And, I mean, I mentioned but, this to Nick after we saw the movie, is the big issue with Dark World was there was too much focus on Loki, an old villain, than the actual Malachite. Right, and this version... I found that this movie was the same thing, though. I think, though, that my issue with Thor Ragnarok was that, yes, it's clear that this is basically part Thor, part Hulk. Yeah. And a lot of it, uh, you know, the other one half of it is Asgard, one uh, the other half is um, Sir... Um, I can't remember, I can't remember that name and the planet's name. Um, the, the Planet Hulk stuff, Yeah, basically. Um, I found that this movie had an identity crisis. Because I couldn't tell... Like, it couldn't differentiate whether it wanted to be a Thor movie or a Hulk movie. And I like, think it was a, the parts it, of the Hulk movie, I really liked. The parts yeah. of the Thor movie, I really liked. And but, like, putting them together, it didn't really mix well for me. Like, I just... At the end of the day, I, I liked the movie. I didn't. I'm not saying I hated the movie. I just, I just didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I would. I, I, mean, I could see where they're going. I think I know where they're going with this, this subplot with Hulk. Oh yeah, exactly. He's gonna. I think he's gonna have an identity crisis as these Infinity War goes on, where Hulk and him are gonna be fighting over who's in control, right, of this situation. Um, Which I love, by the way, because that's. That is exi that piece of the Hulk, like that identity stuff between Hulk and Bruce Banner, that is lifted straight from the comics. And I think mm -hmm. that was done very, very well. And the fact that it's like, oh, you know, where have I been this entire time? It's like, yes, yeah, so that, that, that can, that Hulk does happen. It shows Hulk has completely taken over. Yeah. 
That, and, that, and that happens. It, they don't merge consciences as much as they... Until, I guess, a little bit later on. Yeah. But, like, the, the path that they're putting this Hulk character on is correct. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the right way to do that character slash characters. Yeah. But it, it, I thought it was, a, it was a good movie. It was. It was. It, it, um, was it my favorite Marvel movie? It's not. No. Thor's, the Thor's have never been the best... I was kind of hoping it would, though. Like, I, as it much is, as I... It is going to be a game changer, though, like they said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially with the whole, like, Asgard With stuff. the whole Ragnarok stuff going on. And especially with, obviously, Thor losing the hammer. Like, they, they are very much officially confirming Mjolnir is gone. Well, and I do like, like that. I don't, know, I don't know how they do it in the comics, they, where, where, he gets, where they say where Mjolnir is essentially his control. Um, it's, it's keeping his powers in control i like i like that you know they can have a see i for me as much as i like the fact the the symbology of the symbolism of him losing the hammer but the hammer not being like vital to his powers i like that symbology mm-hmm. it's very symbolic symbolic of well, sort of his development as a character but it didn't, it at was... the same time hulk or not hulk thor without his hammer it's it's very weird. Like that's the intro the intro sequence when him with him fighting Surtees Cersei's um Hella? Serta. The, the very, very beginning. Him Oh, right. Like yeah. that that sequence of him fighting that character was very Thor to me. Like that's what yeah. I really enjoyed. It was him cre- creatively using that hammer to you know, get out of certain situations. Yeah. And that's cool. But him losing that hammer, like, was a big it's really weird to me. Like and I don't and the fact that this character is going to be going on to the other Marvel movies and, and, and other Thor movies without that hammer, it's going to be very, very weird. It's going to be a hard transition. And yes, this is sort of like, this is the Winter Soldier equivalent for yeah, Thor. It was. It is a very Winter Soldier equivalent for Thor. Okay. And that's exactly what they, you know, Taiko wanted, uh, you know, started. He's like, this is going to be very weird. This is going to be oh, yeah. massive for and it Thor. And it's in very 80s-ish. Yes, that, that that that's that's a, a weird mix. <laughs> and, uh, I I found Jeff Goldblum's character is really weird, even for him. Jeff Goldblum just played Jeff Goldblum. I, but I, th- I found my character was weird even for him. Um, I can see that. I can see. I, just, I can see where you're coming from. That I I mean, of all the characters in the film, I think he was one of my best ones, <laughs> one of my favorite ones. Yeah. yeah. Um. But then, then, at the end of the day, I can't really nail down that one character that I think from this movie that's like, oh, I totally like blank from this movie, other than the obvious Thor or, or Loki or whoever, right? Um, I didn't like that there was that one end sequence at the end of Ragnarok. It's like, oh, you know, we're, we're showing this entire destruction sequence, and then they kind of laughed it off with that one line. I'm like, this is... that You don't... I don't know. like I The, th- the fact that you just lost... That you lose the entire Asgard and you get, you kind of have a throwaway line with that at the end of it. Like I feel like there was almost too much comedy in this movie. I still think that there's, I, I, I still think there's too much comedy in it for me. Like for him trying to break the window with the ball. I, I found it what it was, like I said, it was better. I guess it, it got better as the movie went on. It does. It, I think it, it's, it's again a growing pain with a movie. You have to go in understanding that this is going. There's going to be very many. Very many sequences where it sh- shouldn't be funny, yet they add in some sort of layer of comedy that does fit within tone. Yeah. Especially the sequence where he's trying to break the window. Yeah. With the ball, and I'm just like, uh, okay, that's he didn't he didn't need that to come back at him. Yeah. But you know that's what they wanted to. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's the Hulk the Hulk sequence with the 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 bath was great. The whole fighting, I, I like the fight between. Yeah, that those was two. Lo- I love the way the cinematography in this movie is for like the fight sequences because it's really really cool. And then even the after the post fight when they're talking about the fight, oh no, I beat you. Yeah, that, know, but and, well, <laughs> well eh, that's not true. Yeah, and t- to be fair, th- there was no real victor. Like it's it. It could have went either way. It really could have gone either way. Like Thor had a clear uh, upper hand, and then Hulk had an upper hand, and then yeah. And then Thor one. I just I think that's going to be one of those unanswered questions of which one of these Avengers which, will actually yeah. be strongest, and we will never get an answer due to whatever plot point. And they did answer one of the biggest things that's been around since the first <laughs> Thor movie. 
I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But Honestly, they answered I, it and solved they, that problem. With a, the quickest throwaway line, and I get it. Fake. Yes. So, <laughs> if you haven't been... if if you really haven't been keeping up with MCU, um, the first Thor movie introduced the Infinity Gauntlet. Well, kind of. It's kind it in of the at, background. In the background uh, of the Asgardian um, vault, weapons vault or whatever. Yeah. And so everyone's like, cool, Infinity Gauntlet, that's awesome. And then we saw it again <laughs> in, in Age of Ultron, but yeah. it was a left-handed gauntlet, not a right-handed gauntlet, but like the one seen in the vault. Yeah. yeah. And I think that actually poses more questions than it does answers <laughs> more so than anything so it's like and just, because it's like why why would why would odin keep a fake infinity because gauntlet? i don't think he could get his hands on the real thing or was it that uh, a show of power thing that, maybe because it's like he could show to the asgardians and, and everyone else like i have the infinity gauntlet it is in my vault don't worry about back it. off yeah like i am the like it answers. It, it poses more questions than it does I don't answers. Know. I think it's it was good, but but it was good, a quick throwaway. But good questions though, not like loophole questions. Yeah, it's not like oh wait, but that exists in this universe. But that means there's two gloves or there's one glove. Like that answers that. It fixes yeah. the loophole, but it it poses valid questions. Um, I think Loki took back the. Oh, he totally does. If you've seen. Spo- just, just to keep spoiler spoiler alert if you've seen the um, infinity war leaked trailer there is a sequence with loki and the cube okay so no, he I does not seen that. he does he does snatch the cube i'm not surprised because he did give a quick glance he to does. it and i think that was more intended for people who were at d23 or who people who have seen the trailer to okay. be like okay so that's that's that and that connects to that sequence in infinity war we were having this discussion kind of after the cube is more of the mind gem, is it not? No, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. yeah I believe it's mind gem. So the, my thought is going into Infinity War is that that's the first one that Thanos gets, and he controls Thor to go fight the rest of the Avengers. I, I think they've played that card enough, though. They played that already in Age of Ultron because they, you know, with the whole Africa instant. With Hulk, I think they've played that. Although Hulkbuster is back... The Hulkbuster arm is no, no, not Hulk. They sent Thor after. Oh, well. Because I think I think uh, Bruce will take back, so he'll be looking just like human, so Thanos won't think of it less, or will think less of him. So like, okay, I'll go after. The, I'll get this as guardian to go after his friends. Yeah, well, that, that could be a definite angle. That could. Definitely I mean, it would be probably be a repeat of that, but you would have a bigger a bigger fight from the first Avenger movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and especially with someone who, because Thor isn't a rage monster. He's no. fairly logical. Well, but though he's, after he's lost his hammer, he's kind of not in control so much anymore. But the but the power of Thor, like his his power comes from the people of Asgard, not the hammer, though. So they need to establish what's going to happen with the Asgard because we saw at the end in the post credit sequence, you see a giant ship coming up. Yep. And it is Thanos' ship. That They've confirmed it. Yeah, the it director is. has confirmed that that is Thanos' ship that pulls up. Right in front of it. Right in front. Like, it, it dwarfs the, oh, the that's the ship. It's, it's, so it's kind of like, oh, shit, this is really happening. Like, so that's gonna, it's going to tie Rick. Like, I really want that MCU timeline thing coming out. Well, because in between, I, like, I want to know how much time has oh. passed since Age of Ultron to this. Uh, two years. Has it been? But but they've I want to know like where like, where it fits in the rest of the timeline. Okay, so if you th- if you do the the math, then because they did say that. Um, so then, does Spider Man come directly before Infinity War? Spider Man comes directly after Civil War, eight months after Civil War. Was it eight months after Civil War? Right, because but, but Thor and Hulk were never part of the Civil War. No, so you don't know when. No. And so there's something that um, the uh, what's his name's. Um, the Russo brothers have been talking about uh, about the whole timeline stuff. Is, is that they had to they presented it's like hey guys, we have to realize, even though these movies are coming up one after the other, some of them are gonna come out at the same time, like in terms of timeline. Yeah. So uh, there is a good ch- and this one has to come. Uh, Thor Ragnarok has to come after Doctor Strange. Well, obviously, yeah. has to come out after Doctor Strange. So Doctor Strange takes place um, either during Civil War or just in the middle of Civil War. I think it just happened after Civil War because there was that mention when he was on the phone with the guy that 
dropped in it, or he could that's, answer. They've confirmed that that's not related to, that's not that's not a roadie. No, it, it just happens to be a coincidence. That's not actually roadie, because I they say know. it's a flight sergeant, but roadie's not a flight sergeant. He is a, um, he's not a captain, but he's not a flight sergeant. That's not know. that's not roadie. They've confirmed that. We'll see. I don't. I don't I'm skeptical. the director. I, you know, anything can happen, but yeah. I think, uh, in terms of timeline-wise, I think the um, uh, Doctor Strange takes place either during or just after Civil War. I want to. I want to say after. Yeah, I think after is more reasonable. But I like more Spider-Man. Where does that? Uh, Spider-Man takes place eight months after Civil War. So, so that then could take... it probably goes Civil War, Spider-Man, Doc Strange, or Doctor Strange and Spider-Man at the same time. And then where does Black Panther fit in? Um, don't know yet. Yeah, because <laughs> the movie's not out yet. That's so why there's I said no. I want the timeline. Does he go straight? Does, does he? Does Black Panther right after Civil War? Does he go straight back to Wakanda? That's what I'm thinking. I think he does. Okay, that, but that there's the, that post credit post credit sequence with in. Winter Soldier, right? Yeah. So it really depends on where. I think Black Panther will start tying all these timelines together. Oh, I hope so. Because that's uh, technically that's the last chance to tie the movie timelines together before the big event. So. But yeah, I I thought it was a good movie. I yeah, Thor, at, at the end of the day, Thor Ragnarok was a passable movie. For uh, me. I don't think that I. Hello was a. I thought it was a good villain. Oh man, they, uh, Kate. Uh, what's her name? Blanchett. Is it Kate Blanchett? Yeah, they did a good job with Kate Blanchett. Like she. I was a little surprised when she first showed up on Asgard. What happened? I didn't. I, I was saw. a little surprised that happened. <laughs> I wasn't surprised. I think the big surprise. The big question is like. Uh, okay, we're Sif. <laughs> yeah, then, there, there's, yeah. a re- there's a reason why she's not in the movie, but not an in-universe reason why. Was it contract? Yeah, she was busy with her TV show. Her oh right, her she has a TV show. show. She has a TV show, yeah. so that's why she it was she, it was literally scheduling conflicts, or else she would have been in that movie too. And I think there's, that's I think that's good though to keep her away from because yeah, that keeping that character alive is really really important. Yeah, like Sif provides a key. Although now you have Valkyrie, who's kind of taken over. And that I think that, role. and I think that would be a really interesting dynamic in in the future Thor movie or even an Avengers movie, yeah. where it's like, oh, you, you're a Sif, you're the Valkyrie. Hi, you guys should meet, <laughs> kind of thing. Like, like Sif that. could be a Valkyrie. She could. I I think that maybe she. No, well, she but was. The Valkyries were kind of a like, a, they're done. Yeah, that that sort of and not not race, but like that that role has kind of gone and kept coming on. Yeah. They, as Thor had said, he had heard stories of him when he was a kid, kind of thing, right? So, yeah. So, but, I mean, uh, was there any other... I have one more thing. I can't remember what that was. This movie was just jam-packed with stuff. Thor Ragnarok was just jam-packed. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of stuff happening. And, I mean, I, they did change it up a bit from the comic. In which... which with Hela. Yeah, yeah. Hela is actually supposed to be Loki's, Loki's a, daughter. Yeah. But it's actually Odin's, Odin's daughter. I think that's a good change. I, I that's fine. <laughs> a mystery sibling. <laughs> mystery. Um, yeah. I, 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 at the end of the day, this is a good movie. I'm not. I'm not racing out to watch it, it again. Yeah. I still think my the, my favorite Phase Three movie is still Volume Guardians Volume Two. That's my personal favorite so far. I mean, I kinda, where, where does Three even start after Ant Man? Uh, uh, um, so, um... Doc Strange. Nope. Yeah. Uh, Doc Strange, Strange came after Ant-Man. Did it, did it kick off Phase 2? 3? Might have. I don't think Phase 3 started with Ant-Man. Fact-checking! I think it uh, did. Fact-checking. No, no, Ant-Man was the end of Act. Fa- phase phase two. 2. Phase 2. Hold on. Phase 3 started with Civil War. Okay. And then Doc Strange, and then yeah. Guardians, and Spider-Man, and yeah. Thor, so Black Panther, then Infinity War. Yeah. Wow, Thor, Phase 3 is just... Phase 3 is massive. Phase 3 is massive. I can't believe they're actually putting two Spider-Mans into the same phase. I think that's misplaced. I think that should be Phase 4. But it maybe that's just my, my my thoughts. And Captain Marvel, I think, is, yeah. should be Phase 4. The start. I, th- I think after Ant-Man and the Wasp... Ant-Man should just be at the end of all phases. <laughs> His films should be at the end of all of them. Yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, like I think, in terms of like a fun aspect and a rewatchability aspect, I think Guardians Volume Two is my personal favorite so far. Uh, just because it's all of those, I probably lean toward maybe Doc Strange. Doctor Strange is good. I, and that's fair. I I see why you how you enjoy that one. Like it's a good movie. It's still a good. It movie. was. I I do love the scenes with 
Doctor Strange in this in Thor movie in this yeah. Thor movie where he's I like just, that, I like he's that, throwing Loki around I like that they finally throw uh, they put his gloves on hey, did you I didn't even that? notice it yeah they finally put uh, gloves on Doctor Strange okay uh, which is a very key role for him like a key like costume piece for him because okay. he always has gloves on in the comics so uh, and that's sort of the big thing not a big thing in the in the Doctor Strange movie is because it's an origin movie they don't have to follow that kind of stuff but obviously going forward they're going to have to be a little more I guess true to the character yeah and so yeah like having yellow gloves is kind of like that's sort of his his big thing maybe it's another power that it... maybe it's another artifact <laughs> yeah Doctor Strange where he's just wearing all these artifacts I'm pulling up images of Doctor Strange. We're just, yeah, we're looking. See, so yeah, he's got gloves on. Oh, we can't really see any of those shots. <laughs> I do love the Stan Lee cameo. Oh, don't let the, the weird guy cut, <laughs> cut my hair. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was good. Yeah, everyone, as silly as Thor was in that scene. Yeah, but you know, all of Stan Lee's uh, cameos are always They're supposed crazy. to be off offbeat and off humor, and they're supposed to break up the monotony. And in a movie which is always monotonous. It's kind of wild. <laughs> it's great. Um, okay, so. But yeah, I mean that's that's that's, that's us. Seen. That's us too. What else have you? Uh, have you been? Uh, no spoilers. No more spoilers. No more spoilers. <laughs> uh, what else have you been up to? Uh, I'm picking away at NHL 18, but that's. Yep. I have my, I have my How's next, your season going? My next game is the prospects game, so which is a big deal for my draft year, mm -hmm. to see where I'm gonna kind of end up. Yeah, because this will determine where you are gonna like get drafted or where you're gonna. Yeah. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, that's. And then I have played some more Shadow of War. How you? How, how's that? I'm on Act Four now. Okay, so Act Three went by super quick. Now is it because your character is over leveled or no? It's because it just... there are literally two missions to Act Three and then a jump right into Act Four. <laughs> that seems unbalanced. But all right, <laughs> all right, and we'll go with that. <laughs> um, I think I finished Act Two. That was pretty much what I was doing before Act Three. At the end of Act Two, it turned into a kind of a game changer, I guess, mm -hmm. for the game. It took a kind of a turn that I wasn't really expecting, uh, which is always good. Mm -hmm. I always enjoy that. Uh, but now it's with all. Now in Act Four, I have all those forts. Sauron is now coming after me. So I have to defend my forts. So, well, who has the Ring of Power right now, then? I don't know. I'm living this story vicariously through you, just so you know. Because I'm super confused on how these games fit in the Lord of the Rings storyline. I don't know who has the Ring of Power anymore. <laughs> I want to say Sauron has it. <laughs> Did you? That's yeah. why he's coming after me. Sure. <laughs> I know. Um, but so now I'm defending the forts. I defended my first one. Uh, I actually had to backtrack a bit and upgrade it. Mm -hmm. uh, now and now I'm. Wait, so he attacked your, your he's fort? Attacking, I have he four forts. Your, so he attacked them all? He's attacking. Well, it's one mission at a time. Oh, okay. They're called Shadow Wars. And so he, I defended my first one, the second one, I lost that one. So now I'm at a point where I have to go back and take that. So if you, back. I was gonna say, like, is there like a game over state or like a game fail state, a game state where you can like fail the game because it's like you, Sauron oh. just rolled you, game over. No, <laughs> you go back and you have to go take on that your fort again. So I have to do that whole process again with that one fort, which is gonna be super pain in the ass. That's why I've stopped playing after for a bit. <laughs> I got frustrated <laughs> with it, uh, but it's. I can now raise the dead. Sweet. So so you're basically a necromancer now. Yeah. That's always good. Uh, I've finished most of the side missions, actually. Now I'm just kind of focusing on the four. Now, is there, a lim is there like a cap to the side missions? Because my understanding is that they're there's, all like, not like procedurally generated, but there's just a lot of them. There's four different sets of them, I guess. Okay. Uh, one is with the people of Gondor. Uh, their side missions. There's uh, a mystical being that you work with. For the second one, there's uh, a guy that betrays you. You have to deal with him. That's a separate one. So there's a whole bunch of, I guess, three or four of them. 
that you have to uh, play with on. Um, so I'm done all those. Oh, that's cute. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. We're, I pulled up a video with Thor and Loki. It's the act, it's actors going to the children's hospitals, but he brings his hammer, and it's that's amazing. <laughs> that kid's just on like the cloud nine. He's like, oh, what do I do? do? Like, what do I do? That's amazing. Yeah, but so yeah, it's I stopped yes. when I lost my fort. So the the first, the first one. Second. Oh, the second. The, one. The, no, the third. The, lost. I, I defended the first one. I was on the second fort, fighting that battle. Because you have to kill all the generals that are attacking you, mm -hmm. and I lost on the last general. And I tell you, when I try and take that fort again, it's going to be a super pain, because he's in the shield guy. Oh, okay. And those guys are so like tougher. So it's not like Assassin's Creed where you can like sort of duck around them or anything like that. Or you can, them. but there's lots of guys that respawn. Lots, lots of guys. Yeah. You don't have any orcs that are like not today, Chris. Nope. None of those. Not in there. Not in there. Not today, Chris. <laughs> no more. <laughs> Yay. You need to start making more friends. I guess. <laughs> that's why I had to start doing now, because that's I've lost everyone. Oh no. And that's in that group. So I had to go and try and take I want I had to go through if I want to, go through that same process where I'm taking out the little captains that go take out their boss who are in control of that uh, castle to go help me take over the overlord. So I might have to start, probably start that process over again, just for that one castle, but still. It makes me weary now to be a little more careful. Come, the, I have the third and fourth castle when I have to defend it. Mm. So now I know what I, I need to be more careful, yep. I guess. Um, but yeah, that then, so I stopped that for a bit, because well, as soon as I lost that castle, I'm like, nope, <laughs> you made me <laughs> GG, <mad>. GG, goodbye. <laughs> uh, How's the platinum trophy in that one? Is, is it, it looks... There's online stuff. Oh, that's the worst. There's only like two, but still. Oh, that's not bad. I know that some of the past online platinum trophies have been like, just log in, play one game, done. So, get to see that they've limited it in, in Shadow it, it's, War. There's a couple. I mean, there's, you have to race to a certain rank. In, I'm uh, checking the game, too. That's uh, 3-2 New York. Boo. <laughs> um, I downloaded uh, Worms Battlegrounds. Is that it's on free. plus? Is that on plus right now? Yeah, it's free. I'll probably move on the last one that I play <laughs> before I cancel my subscription. It's nothing special. It's a worms game. I like worms though. The narrator I find super annoying. She's, yeah, like, she's, yeah. No, she's like a she's talking. She's like a Laura, a mean Laura Croft. Because she talks about. But Laura Croft is already kind of condescending. Well, no, she talks. <laughs> like, well, no, she's like, this is what I love. I love going in to get relics and then blowing the place up. And it's like, and then she mentions that like every like three times in the mission. It's like, shh, let me do my thing. It's really weird though with this because I'm following the campaign. I've only done a few levels mm -hmm. uh, in the campaign, but it's you're in control of one guy right now, and he's just making his way through checkpoints in a worm's level. Hmm. It's really weird. I think it's setting up for like it's just kind of a. Isn't but okay. So does a single player feel tacked on though? Because when I think bit. when I think worms, I only, the only thing I think of is multiplayer. Yeah, and I haven't got. I've never. I haven't done that. Which begs the question: Why is there no worms game for the Switch? I don't know. Not that yet. would be the best. The not best yet. experience. It's like I'm playing worms. Oh, I can play with a friend. Let's do this. <laughs> you know how awesome that would be. Yeah, yeah, like that. The oh, one no, the, the I, switch. I, and my brother downloaded it too, so we could so we, start a clan if we want. Apparently, apparently, he said, I'm like, "Oh, there's clans in this. We can totally make our own." Like, Yay! You're probably not gonna play it for no, long. No, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I, um, but yeah, that, and that's. I mean, that's it for my gaming. I didn't get mm. very far in Worms. Um, you don't get very far in Worms in general. Though. Well, it's campaign. Yeah. It's more trophy hunting on that. Which I I'm so I'm 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 kind of glad that when you get trophies with the uh, PS Plus games that you keep them. Yeah, my understanding. So. Yeah. So I mean I got a couple of those. Uh, the last thing I've done and you I mentioned. We this can actually before, talk about this now. You are proud of me, of, or you should be proud of me. We can talk about this now. I watched at least season one. Stranger Things. Good. And did you? The end of the, the big question. I is, thought it was do, a little slow like start. It is a slow start. 
It is a bit and of get picked up like the last few episodes. I think it picks up closer to the middle. It's like when um, you start when you start realizing what's happening with the the kid, like he's not actually dead, kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? Once you start understanding that Will's not actually gone, I felt bad for the mom. Yes. Hey, it's one of those moments. Like, we're, we're not know she's right. We're not a writer, yeah. yeah. But everybody else is looking at her like, what's a little bit to you? You get a little bit of the analogy, and I guess. A little bit of the inspiration for it, the new it movie. I would say it comes from Stranger Things. Not I can see a lot of similarities. So it's like it. the terrible adults, terrible. Other than the sheriff, the sheriff is the best character in the entire series. <sighs> I'm not a fan of him. You, I loved him. I loved the way. Maybe that, it's season two. They'll turn it around. But just the way he ended season one, I, I think, didn't like that. But I, you have to also look from where he started, though, because you have, your first introduction to the character is like, oh, he's just. He's just an alcoholic sheriff that doesn't give a shit about his town. No, he actually gives a ton of shits about his town. He does. He just. But that's that's where I don't like where he essentially betrayed L. Like that's where I don't like um, is he essentially did that. Yes, it's for a good yes, cause. Yes. But he did betray, betray her. There is a sense of closure for that in season two. I won't. Okay. I won't spoil what that is. Like that's why I'm a little disappointed. There is. There's a bit of uh, continuity for that piece, for that chair, his... Um, his reasoning behind yes. why he did it? Not just his reasoning, uh, but like but the way he, his character builds in season two. I like I, At the end of season two, I don't think he's my favorite character, mm-hmm. but it shows him sort of living up to that those consequences, that the, sort of the things that he does. Okay. Uh, there is a sense to, like, a, a whole circle for his character development. And yes, watch season two, because... His character goes in a weird direction with... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to rush that. on this, I think. No, no, you don't like, have I, to. I finished one in a week, which, I mean, that's so essentially a episode a, big, a day. My, okay, my problem with the, the break between season one and two, and especially for people who are getting into it right now, like yeah. for you, uh, the break between season one and two for people who have actually waited that distance, it actually makes that the wait... I guess better because there is a time gap between season one and two, mm-hmm. and exactly six months, as well. And so six months or a year? I don't remember. But whatever. Okay. It's it's an equivalent time gap, and so when you pick up season two again, the, these characters have lived that time gap rather than starting right away. Mm-hmm. And so it's like it's a year of spoilers slash no spoilers. Eleven is back. Oh well, yeah, you like you know yeah. that already. Like yep. she's she's in the casting list. Like you know you know that. So uh, them living with the the realization that L is gone, it, it's it it's a little bit more impactful. Yeah. So it's like oh these kids had to lead their life knowing the shit just happened at the end of this. You know, I like how school. she finished off the demi gorgon. Yeah, like they need like Will not Will um Mike. 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 Mike is like, oh man, I need to find Elle. Like, I know she's alive somewhere. Blah blah blah. And like, you know that she's he, like he's spent this entire year looking for her, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like it's that that wait seems a little bit more impactful rather than if you were to jump right into season two. So if you are going to do season two, I wouldn't go right away. No, I'm not going to. I don't think. Cause... I wouldn't. I wouldn't go right. I would give it like maybe a week or two, or we'll so. See. Just but just go into it realizing that it's not a, a direct like mm-hmm. follow up. It's going to be like a time yeah. gap. Where these characters have gotten a little bit older, they uh, some characters aren't in high school anymore, that kind of stuff. So they're out of high school. No, 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 like the, the older characters. Yeah, the the, the older characters, I think. The, or like they, or if Steve they, like they, yeah, like they're they're seniors now, like this, or it's like the I'm last confused. year. I'm confused. They're in high school now, or they were in high school in season one, were they not? Yeah. So this will be their season. Their their senior. I think it's their season year. Uh, senior. Uh, Nancy, senior year. Nancy and Nancy's senior year and and Jonathan's out of school. The Leafs. That's Will's brother. Yes. It seems like yeah, he's he's, out. he's never he's never really in school. Yeah. He. I think he. I feel like he his character oh. might have dropped out. Because they after they after mentioned in season one that he, they were talking to a college with him, so it makes me like, feel that he's either just out of high school that he was a year ahead of them. Yeah. Or. He just was in their grade, but just never came to yeah. school. It's never quite clear where his his education. That so, character. But, I mean, I like I like Jonathan. You'll love him in season two. Uh, and Dustin. You'll love him in season two. Like those are probably my two favorite characters. Uh, like like Nick and I had talked about last week. Uh, they they actually mix the the character interactions up. So they are they do bring characters together in mm-hmm. season two that normally aren't together. 
and it provides for a very very interesting character dynamic okay um, again I'm not going to spoil who those yeah. are because it's like when you watch it watching them play out it's like, like they're all their own separate sections like yes. there's the kids there's the teenagers and then yeah. there's the adults yeah uh, and so uh, the adults is not a very big the adults group. is it's only uh, the adults is a big the two group. of them there's about two there's only Hops and my own writer character there's I, I want to say there's two major adult characters with like you know backstory kind of stuff like character arcs is the more technical term mm -hmm. uh, in season two and they are very very good so yeah. uh, I mean I like how Jonathan beat up Steve because Steve was acting like a dick mm -hmm. yeah they 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 kind of play on that a little bit in season two they they there are con well not consequences but they like it's just it was kids being kids essentially like when they push John like when they keep pushing Jonathan well maybe you killed your brother mm -hmm type thing and it's like in my head like well why the hell would you say that but it's yes. just it's teenagers just act like I'm mad so I'm just gonna say shit that I yep. don't you, no that's that's completely correct like it's it's like they did that very well it's a very real show yeah as, as sci-fi as it as much as it is mm -hmm. it's a very grounded show because it's it's a like situation especially in the 80s like where you don't have cell phones. You don't have yeah. communication stuff. They they play that off really really good in this mm -hmm. movie. Yeah, yeah I mean, or not movie. Like, well, yeah, it, felt I know, like, I know what you it feels like a movie. Like the way that this show is presented is so. It's, I'm glad pretty much those government people are gone in season one. Obviously, they're probably going to come back in season two. Yes. <laughs> yes. But how the Denny Gordon pretty much took them all out, and Elle went. Yes. And exploded their heads. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like, I, I, there's I, a cool. There's a couple cool episodes in season two that you're gonna love. Then, <laughs> well, like where, where they had them, where they had the kids surrounded, and yep. they all stepped up and just like, mm, no. And there, that actually gets brought up too in how season she two. Killed them all. Yeah. There's a there's a story. <laughs> She's ruthless. There's a season two sequence where it's like I totally forgot that that happened, and then they brought it back from season one where they said, like, "Oh, did this. <laughs> it's like, oh, you are a cold blooded." <laughs> You are cold blooded. Well, no, like, I, like, I like when she like, is snapping things when she just does a little head twitch. She doesn't do it as much. But I'm just like when when she when there's the the asylum guys and she threw one back in into mm -hmm. the wall and then the other, she saw the other one and just kind of twitched and a little bit of that head reminded snap. a little bit of that reminded me of like X Men <laughs> when they were trying to yeah. when they do that with like the young kids with the young mutants it that felt a little bit of like and, that and even then with the bully where she just did a twitch and the, guy, and the kid's arm mm -hmm. broke. Yeah. She has a she has a violent tendency. A weird arc in season or a weird episode in season two, mm -hmm. which dives really deep into her backstory. And well, she well you know she got taken away from her mom. Yes, there is stuff. It, it does talk about that, but it flesh it it fleshes that out way more. How they well, from what I got out of it was they drugged the mom. And made the mom think that she lost her child, but really Elle came out into the world, and they just took her from there. They they provide more context in that. Okay. There's a little more to it than just that, but yeah, that's a little bit. That's that part is, of it is true, but there's mm -hmm. more to it than that. And with pa it's Papa coming back. The actor is. I will. I will confirm the actor is on the set, but in <laughs> as to what role, I'm not gonna let. Okay. Uh, that that's a bit of a spoiler. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it was a good season. Like I said, it took all the pick up. You're right. I liked when they go... The only part that really kind of... Where I started coming back to where I was with It. I remember the first time we saw It, both me and Nick, but it was we knew scenes were coming up, but we were both, no, no, no. And the only time I did that in this show is when Nancy went into the tree. I'm like, no, don't do it. No, yep. stupid. Yep. <laughs> but you know what? The, they they telegraph those sequences very very forward. Like the, in especially I was in expecting season, more jumpy, but it turned out it really wasn't. Season two jumpy. is more. Season two is more jump. Is it? Yeah, a little more jump. Well, the, that like, I, I would say about thirty percent. That scene was the only part that really kind of was, I was anticipating the jump, but it never really. I would say it has. It's about thirty percent more jump scares. This first not season too much. didn't have any. Which is it's not that much more in season two. Okay. It, there is more, but and again, they telegraph it very clearly. It's like, oh, something's totally gonna happen in this sequence because it's like, oh, he's around the corner. You can see the monster or whatever. But still, you're still going, nope. 
Yeah. Nope. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> or it's like, you know something bad's going to happen. You're not going to like what's going to happen, but yeah. you're going to watch it anyways. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. been my week. Fun. Cool. Um, like you, I, I did watch Thor. Yep. If you want to watch, if my thoughts on it, just go back a little bit. Rewind. Yep. Uh, the Sunday after, I watched Pokemon. Oh, yes. I watched Pokemon. I choose I you. I choose you. So. How was that? Okay, so. <laughs> I loved this movie. I I loved it more than Thor. And no, I'm not I'm not surprised by that. It, it's not surprising, <laughs> based off of my history. Yes. Uh, but I really, really, really loved it. It was a really well done movie. Mm-hmm. The so the big the b- premise behind this movie is that it's the 20th anniversary movie yep. that f- was released in Japan last year to coincide with the 20th anniversary of the franchise. Yeah. It, and it being the 20th movie, the fish, 20th official movie as well. So this is a retelling of Ash's origin story. Okay. So, so when he first gets Pikachu? When he first gets Pikachu, uh, but the story actually wildly diverges from that as well. So there is no Brock, there is no Misty, okay. there is... Uh, he still gets Pikachu, obviously. Um, his first Pokemon that he catches is still Caterpie. I caught the Pidgeotto first. Nope, he catches Pidgey. Uh, he catches Caterpie first oh, okay. from the from the anime. And so yeah, they essentially what this movie is is a they piece together some of the cool moments throughout the season one of Pokemon in the Kanto That's region. A big season. It is a big season. Um, again, so and the Charmander sequence is in there. Okay. Uh, where he finds so Charmander in the rain. That sequence is in there. It's a it's modified to fit the movie. Okay, I was gonna say because Brock helped him with that. Yes, because <laughs> so um, the one thing I really liked about this Pokemon movie is that the the thing about the original series is that it was always just the original one fifty one Pokemon and that's it. Like, yeah. Kanto region Pokemon, that's it. They they don't re- recognize or acknowledge any of the and in the other regions. Yeah. Well, now playing some of the more modern games, watching some of the more modern animes, it's like yes, they have they've been recognizing yes, this Pokemon is from this region. Oh, that's cool! Like I've never seen a Pikachu before, even though Pikachu is super common in Kanto yeah. or in Unova. It's like oh, you've got a Pikachu. That's cool! Like I want to take a picture with you and stuff like that. Um, with this movie, they they full on embrace the idea that there can be different Pokemon from different regions. So, okay. again, because this is a retelling of the original Pokemon series, like yeah. the anime, it's still him going and getting the different badges, like the, the first... The, they don't show many of the gym battles. Uh, how long, I was going to say, how long is this movie? They don't show a lot of the gym battles. The only gym battles they show is the one with Cerulean... Not Cerulean, um... um Giovanni? Uh, no, 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 no. It's nothing bigger. It's, uh, I think it's the Rainbow Badge, which is the Grass Gym. Okay. Um, the all-female gym. Yeah. So, they show that battle. Uh, and then after that, they started making their own storylines okay. for the movie because the the big piece is that if you remember watching the first anime I don't, episode, I don't know if you remember this, uh, the first Pokemon he sees a- after Pikachu is actually Ho Oh. Nope. It's uh, so the big story behind that is that he sees Ho Oh flying off in the distance after the Spiro yeah. event. Like the first legendary Pokemon he sees is, is Ho Oh flying okay. in the rainbow. And when you watch the show to begin with, it's like, what is that Pokemon? Well, we don't know. This world is filled with different Pokemon. This movie is about him searching for Ho-Oh. Okay. And so, it, in some in, in some ways, this is Ho-Oh's big movie because he's never had any representation in any of the anime or any of the other movies until now. Yeah. And so, Ho-Oh is a cool Pokemon. He's the Phoenix Pokemon, okay. essentially. And so it's basically him trying to find his way with these new helpers, Pokemon, or helper people. I, they're new characters that they made specifically <laughs> for this movie. Professor Oak in this? He is in this movie. Okay. He is in this movie as well. He, no, he is not in this movie. I think they reference They, I think they reference him, okay. but they don't show him. Because, uh, as usual, he wakes up late to get his porn yeah. Pokemon. All the other Pokemon have been taken except for Pikachu. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah. Um... And yeah, like, the, the fact that this, they acknowledge that there's so many different types of Pokemon in this world, in, like, in this universe, but they're in Kanto. So one of the first big events that happens in the movie is he's at the Pokemon Center, he's talking to his mom over the, the cell phone or whatever like that. Yeah. And then someone someone goes, there's an Entei outside the, out there, we need to go catch that Entei. Like, 
a, like a horde of Pokemon <laughs> trainers goes so and tries. Pokemon Go. It's basically Pokemon Go, <laughs> where it's like, oh my, there's an entity right out there. And so yeah, like it draws in all these people, and it really like shows how powerful these legendary Pokemon are because they all try to capture him, but they yeah. can't. They just can't because he's he's motherfucking Entei. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the guy, like he is cool. Uh, and so yeah, like it's. The fact that they acknowledge that even though they're in Kanto, there's different Pokemon from different regions with mm-hmm. everyone else. And it's it really makes this world real. Not real in the sense that it's obviously Expands our world. It expands it right away. But it makes it, it it's, it's got this like connective tissue that, yes, there's other regions, but we're going to focus on Kanto, even though you've got Pokemon from mm-hmm. uh, Unova, from Alola, from all these other different regions. So, and... So the, this is the, basically the legendary ho movie with Marshadow. Marshadow is the new legendary that they introduced in Generation 6, okay. Sun and Moon. Okay. As a ghost fighting type Pokemon. I think his backstory is a little bit different than from the games, mm-hmm. but they still brought him in as part of a you know, story Villain hook. type thing. Villain, story hook kind of thing. Uh, and so, yeah, like I super freaking love this movie. Like it, it's, <laughs> it's well done. The, the voice acting is well done. It's just bad enough, but it's just good enough. <laughs> it's just what I expected from... It's exactly what you expect from a Pokemon show. It, it's not terrible, yeah. but it's also not the best acted. I think okay. they also got the same voice actor for Ash from the... Original? X and Y series. Let me think. Yeah, from the X and Y series. Because they have a different voice actor for each season. Okay. Uh, and obviously, when they were making this movie and voice recording it, that's when the era was. It, it, they didn't have the Sun and Moon stuff yet. The okay. voice actor. And the Sun and Moon arc is super weird in the anime anyways because he gets younger, even though he's still 10. Hmm. I don't know. It's it's not quite clear his age, but he's always 10. Yeah. <laughs> is is the, the, the takeaway. Um, yeah, no, if you had a chance to watch it last week, it's it's amazing. Like, it's... I, I had way more fun with Pokemon, <laughs> the Pokemon movie, than I did Thor. And I did not expect that in, in, in a weird way like I think I think it's just a, that it's a really well done Pokemon movie not yeah. that it's not that Thor was bad it was just it was a really well done Pokemon movie mm-hmm. so nice um, and of course I got a Pokemon card from it I didn't bring it with you, me you got a couple of them didn't you yeah so I got one the fiance got one and then they gave me a second one because I cheesed it. <laughs> it was just a bunch of people handing out the cards at the end of the movie. Yeah. So I went to one and then kind of sneaked my way around oh. and grabbed another one. Yeah, yeah, no. Sneaky. Those cards are not worth that much money anyways. <laughs> They're <laughs> like <almost>. five bucks <laughs> if you really want one. Uh, but it's super cute because it's got Ash's hat on it. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a Groot moment at the end of the movie. A Groot moment? There's a really weird Groot moment with Pikachu. Okay. Um... I don't care if you, you... I don't think you care. Uh, so, if you've watched Pokemon anime, you know they only say that either their name or they growl. Yeah. There's a moment at the end of this movie where Pikachu starts saying human words. Oh, God. It is super freaking weird. And I think in the context of it, it was just Ash, like, listening, yeah. like, hearing what he was hearing. He was still saying his own Pikachu, Pikachu, whatever yeah. it is. But... There is a moment where he speaks human words, and it gets super freaking awkward because it's, uh, it's just super. Kind of, yeah, it threw me off, that. and it's just like, oh, it's an emotional sequence in this movie at the end, and I get why this is happening, but I'm not okay with it. <laughs> Pikachu says Pikachu. He says one word, and he says it really well. Yes. <laughs> different volumes, different tones. And and at the end of the day, I think that it was a super good. It was. It was a good idea for them to do it that way. Mm-hmm. There was a there was a lot of weight to that sequence. Um, it's very similar to the Pokemon, the original Pokemon movie, where Ash gets turned into stone. Yeah. Sequence where Ash dies, quote unquote. Um, it's there's a sequence. There's a there's a. It's similar to that sequence. Uh, from my from talking to my friends who also watched the movie, who are super into Pokemon as well. Um, they didn't like it as much, yeah. only for the fact that they handpicked certain moments from the show, brought them into this movie, and then changed those moments. So if you remember the with Charizard in the anime, he Charizard never listens to Ash. No, he never listens to Ash. He got leveled up too fast. He got leveled up too fast. Exactly. 
Uh, in this movie, when he picks up the Charmander, the Charmander obviously grows and yeah. evolves into Charizard. But for story purposes, he is very loyal to Ash. I can, supposed to be. He's not supposed to be, and I get that, and I agree. However, for the purposes of this movie, that would have been way too much story. Yeah. And I think that, that to, the decision to make Charizard loyal, and Charmeleon loyal, to Ash, is a, it's perfect. Because it's showing character growth between their relationships, as well as them kind of bonding together. Because that would have been way too much exposition way too yeah. much story to, to fit into Probably. a movie that's why I guess I asked you how long this movie was because it, it seems like they're fitting a lot yeah it's, it's very condensed it. um, it's only about I think an hour and a half like so I, it's like and I know the season um, it's based off obviously Japanese anime seasons so there are like 50 60 episodes it, in if, a season to be, to be honest I think they only f- like moments from the show they only fit about two or three from two or three big moments from the show into this. But you're still taking from it a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's it's a very condensed version of the origin story with modifications, obviously. I think that, that, that part would kind of throw me off a bit. Right. And I think the big piece is that, yeah, there's no Misty, there's no Brock. Mm-hmm. Um, those took up tons of anime, or anime Well, yeah, so they have their own episodes. They have their own episodes, they have their own arcs, they have their own reasons for, for joining yeah. Ash. Uh, whereas these two new partner characters, they just are just friends, and they do separate at the end of the movie. They they go their separate ways, mm-hmm. um, but in the in the context and confines of this movie, I think that uh, it, not having Ash or not having Misty or Brock is probably a smart idea because you don't want to play. It would have been too much fan service. That you still need to make an origin movie, mm-hmm. and this is yes, this is the twentieth anniversary for. The series, right? You're you're celebrating some of the better parts of the show, and there is a butterfree moment. There is the Charizard stuff, like him growing with Charizard. Yeah. Um, but they still need to tell an origin, like a, a, an original story, and it nails it hits the nail. I think this is, nice. and some place some people don't like it. I to each their own, obviously. Right? Yeah. But for me, I I can definitely see myself finding this movie on DVD when it comes out. Yes. So. Uh, and yeah, and the fact that it was only in theaters for like two days yeah. <laughs> is the crazy part about it too. Were there a lot of people? There were tons of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went on the Sunday showing because in Edmonton, I think we had three days. Okay. Or three showings of it. Three or four. Saturday had two. Sunday had two. Um, okay. So my friends went to the earlier showing before me. Yeah. And theirs wasn't as packed as mine was. I think ours... The two o'clock showing on Sunday was super packed. Okay. Um, everyone sang to the intro. <laughs> oh God. It's the one. It's that one oh. song, and they overlay that one song with clips and pieces from all the other movies as well. Okay. And so it's <laughs> they they gotta th- catch them all. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's just yeah, I had a really cool time in this movie. <laughs> If, if you ever get a chance to find it like online or anything like that it's, mm-hmm. if you like Pokemon or if you've watched the original shows uh, go into it with an open mind know that there's no it's not true to the original story yeah. but just have a good time yeah. like it's not don't don't think too much into it is the, is never my do going into movies um, so yeah I've uh, been doing that um, playing Super Mario Odyssey Yeah, I have finished I saw credits it's all great. I I say that, but I feel like there's so much more to this game because there's over 900 moons. Yeah, I think I ended with three something. And you can go back and play it. And you can go back and yeah. replay. It. And the big piece about that is that once you finish the game, it unlocks several other moons that you can find and collect. Okay. Basically, so uh, my takeaway: it, Are you playing? Are you gonna play it eventually? Eventually. eventually? Yeah. Don't worry about collecting all the moons you can find. You don't know me. Don't. <laughs> the first time around, anyways. Wait until at least you finish the game, okay. because there is way more to do. Okay. Um, though there is one boss fight that I was just stuck on for like three days, and oh. I could not, for the life of me... Was it the final boss? No, it was, no the final boss was easy. The final... If anything, the final boss and the final sequence is just one of the coolest moments in that game. 
because okay. um, it plays around with the whole 3D slash 2D stuff. Okay. You know, when you're like in the wall at yeah. 8-Bit Mario, it plays along with all, all that stuff all together. And it gets really Japanese in a weird way. <laughs> Because it <laughs> that it play it overlays this song. It's not the Jump Up Superstar song. Okay. It's a whole new song that they play just for this end sequence, hmm. and it is the craziest Japanese way to present this game. Um, and it looks great at the same time. Like that final final sequence is super cool with Bowser, and yeah, it definitely after you're done Shadow of War, definitely look into that. Getting that. I think a Nesquik D card. Oh yeah, you want a digital? That's my thing. That's. That's what's holding me back right now. Okay. Well, we can always go to Best Buy and take a look. I have went to my local Best Buy. They have nothing. They don't have memory cards? They do, just not the ones you guys specified to me. Oh, well, well okay. <laughs> so. We can go Memory Express as well, so. We can check. Either way, that's, that's oh, yeah. now they're it, it, there. In due time. Yeah. It, it, that game is not going anywhere, and it is such a massive game. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there is tons of stuff to do afterwards. Like... You can collect all the costumes still. Um, you don't need Amiibos for any of the special costumes. Okay. Thank, thank God. <laughs> because you just come here and just start taking Nick only has the one. Oh. He only has the one costume. Um, and I refuse to open my gold Mario. <laughs> it's actually 60 bucks now. Sealed. And I'm like, oh man, I should get Charles Martin to sign it. <laughs> he was here at Comic Expo oh, yeah. and I missed out on that. Um, yeah, there's that game is amazing, and I still play. I think I play more of it in handheld mode than I do anything, just because it's just I play it at work. I yeah. play on my lunch break and yeah, I just in bed and stuff like that. I can't do that. I get in trouble. Well, no, not during your lunch break though. I play during the lunch. Yeah, break. Yeah, people like to talk. Oh. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's right. That's fair. <laughs> um, I I'm still playing that. Into the Dead game, the, the zombie running game, only for the fact that I need another mobile game other than Pokemon <laughs> Go. Wait till Harry Potter comes out. I, I, have to get a, I have to move out. I have to walk out for that. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to play this game on my couch. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just a light zombie shooting game. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not looking into it much. I'm not spending any money into it. No. It's, I, sp- I've, I gave him my five bucks. That's all I'm that's all getting from ad free. No, no, I bought a gun from them. Oh, okay. I bought a gun, but that's all they're getting from me. Uh, I've supported you guys. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a fun game, but I'm not, again, I'm not one of those like heavy games. I want the game I actually want to play is uh, Wolfenstein too. I've yeah, been, I want to I want to try and get through that first one. Once I do that, I think I'm just gonna watch this stuff on YouTube. I think I'm just gonna watch. Well, it on, I, I own it on. A, you own on it, so you should so you should play it. But I think. For me to try and find it, it's probably not worth it. I think it's like uh, twenty. It's on the it's on the sale right now. I think. Is it really? Yeah. Like PSN sale? Yeah. I to the. F- I, I think I might be wrong. To the fact it. checking. It's been on and off. I've been noticing so, um, the sales have been kind of they repeat. The store. To the fact checking PlayStation Store. That's what it's called. <laughs> yes. PlayStation. Uh, I guess I'll just search up the name of the game. Wolf. Because I've been hearing a ton of ge- uh, talk about. I think that's out now. Yeah, the, yeah, the DLC. I might have to try and get back into that. Mm, that's fair. Well, I beat the first one. I platinum it. I may as well just go and. Wolfenstein: The First Order. Or the New Order. Twenty. Twenty-six Five bucks. bucks. Eh. I'm just, I think I'm just gonna end up YouTubing the, the ending for that game. Or the main story beats of it, anyways. Because I've been hearing some crazy, crazy talk about that game, the sequel. I've it's heard just, just I, and nothing but good things either. I've added it to the Christmas list. If someone wants to buy it for me for my family, then go for it. <laughs> I think my big thing is I don't know if I want to play it on the PC, PS4, or Switch next year. Yeah, I'd, I'd if, like, you, if you want to play it now, that's my thing. I don't. I, I, I want to. I want to play it now. But I also want to play it on my Switch. <laughs> what do you play? What are you better at with shooters? What do you mean? Well, if you're like with, with shooters, are you better with the PC? I'm both. I can do both. I, I, I was born and raised with a controller, but I can I, You've obviously adapted. yeah. With my Overwatch amount of Overwatch and TF2, like I can play on PC too. Um, so I, I just 
Um, I want to play. Well, I want to play the new Colossus. I, I really do because I hear nothing but like great things about it. like IGN. I think gave it like a nine one. Oh yeah. Like they everyone same is same with same with uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. That's another one I want to get. Into. Just, <laughs> I got a nine too. Inversely though, um, Need for Speed Payback nope. getting some shit reviews. Nope. Thank you. I'm really sad that that is so underperformed. Because it, it looked really cool. Racing games. Yeah. But, like, Fast and the Furious, though. So. Fast and the Furious game. Give me game. Mario Kart, and I'm happy. That's my racing. That's also fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. That's that's all I've been doing this week. Cool. I haven't really... I've been doing a lot of Pokemon card stuff. Um, we've got some League challenges and League Cups coming up. But that's... And I'm just prepping for those. Because... Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be judging or playing, but I need to at least get a deck ready mm -hmm. in case. Uh, I have a couple of funky deck ideas, but I haven't fully committed to them because they're not done yet. Uh, but that's my big piece. That's my big thing. Cool. Yeah. So that's it for us. Yes. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Uh, we should have a f full, f full, full, full bench. Full bench. Full bench. Uh, if you liked what you saw today, Go and check us out on our website, www.railrollnews.com, with a dot .com. <laughs> There's always a dot .com. And it's very important. It's a very know, important part of this. You, know, you can forget the www, but yes. the dot .com is very, very important. Uh, you can find more about our social spaces there, Facebook, uh, Twitter. You can find links to our Discord chat where you can actually interact with us live. Yes. Uh, you can also send us messages. Uh, such as Jake, he had sent us a message earlier this week. Um, as Jake knows, Stanky Manky. Stanky Manky, sorry, Stanky Manky. Uh, you guys, you were asking about uh, pub, uh, PUBG, either it was a PUBG or Fortnite, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, my response is I only have experience with PUBG. Um, I've never. Neither. I, I Fortnite is freer now, right? Like the oh. the pub the the no 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 the um. That mode that they added, that's free. So you can actually download and but play then that. But you have to get the game first. No, no, no. You don't have to buy the game, though. I don't know how that works. It's super weird. The Fortnite thing is super weird. Uh, but in terms of where I stand on it, that is where I stand. I, like, PUBG is my experience. Yeah. I own it. It's, it's easy to get into. It's it's fast. Um, Fortnite, I've never really gone into. I, I, mean, I haven't played either. I'd one. like to get into Fortnite some more. I'm a PlayStation person. I don't play PUBG. Eventually you can play it. One day. One day you will. And I'll join you on that. But one day, that'll happen. Uh, but yeah, that's that's. you can ask questions like that on our Discord chat. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's basically it. Uh, if, anything to add? Nope. No? No. Nope. Okay. Nailed it. Yeah, that's basically it. So let me just get to the... the mm -hmm. So we will see you guys... Next week, same great taste, same great time. Starting back at a regular time at 11. 11 o'clock. And we'll see you then. Yep. Goodbye. Bye.